Hi there, Mark here again, and in this video I'm going to be building, reviewing and testing out all the features of this Dream Cabriolet VM05 from U-Gears Mechanical Models. So straight away, let's get into the box. So as you can see we get all these pieces of plywood, we've got plenty of sheets here, I think there are over 700 pieces in this kit, and you simply push the pieces out of the sheet, like so, and all the parts just push together with no glue required whatsoever. You get a fantastically detailed instruction booklet or instruction manual, as you can see there are tons and tons of pages, and they're all kind of pictorial steps or diagrams of how to push all the parts together. In the bottom of the box we've got a whole bunch of cocktail sticks for helping the assembly of the parts, tons of rubber bands, some abrasive paper and some wax for lubricating the moving parts. As there are so many steps and so many parts to put together, um, what I'll do is I'll fast forward most of the build, I'll put parts together and just focus on parts that are particularly tricky or particularly interesting and uh, we'll have a look at the finished car and all the different features and hopefully we should be able to wind it up and it should drive along at the end. So let's get cracking. So the first thing to note is on each page it shows here the sheets that you need for all the parts on this page to complete that page. So it shows sheet one there for, and the shaded parts, the ones you need and it shows there part sheet three and there's one part on there which is this tool. So this tool we've got the pointed end and that's to help you push the parts out of the sheet like that and you can also use it for measuring the length of the cocktail sticks that you'll need to cut to length and also for uh, when you need to measure the elastic bands or the length of elastic bands that you need to tie up so definitely a useful little tool there the other thing to note is this symbol here which shows uh, wax and a gear which shows that you need to rub wax onto that part to lubricate it and this symbol here that shows you need to use the abrasive paper to rub down and smooth off the rough edges of the part. So step one, I've started, so it's this small part number three. Part number two, make sure you get it the right way around, lined up as it shows in the diagram. And part number one pushes through there. So that really is a tight fit, I've got to say. And one thing to note is don't push it all the way through. It doesn't actually show that in the diagram. So here you can't actually see that it's not all the way through, but uh, if you look further on in the book, you can see that it needs to be left like that, slightly sticking out. Okay, so I'm up to page nine now, I've got this part to do. So, so far I've been building these components. You can see there's this kind of winder here, and you can see the parts moving around. And then you've got this bigger, I think this is like a bulkhead assembly, and again there's more gears on this. And there's these levers that are spring-loaded by the rubber bands that you have to tie down to about eight millimeters long um, yeah and there's these levers here and just one of the important things is to make sure when you get to each stage like this that you, you give everything a good turn and make sure everything's moving freely you can see this seems to be working okay now it's really really vital that you get everything oriented the same as it shows you in the manual if you get anything the wrong way around it really won't go together and you'll be really struggling but uh, so make sure you copy exactly uh, the way everything's lined up in the manual so these two pieces now have got to go together so this piece there is going to go into that hole and if I just hold it like this I'll show you the manual and hopefully you can see it matches exactly what you can see in the instructions. So next we've got to fit this place and then six of these tiny little round pieces that are going to act like bearings I think and they fit. And part 38 goes over the top of that held in place by this tiny little piece of dull like so. So there we go as I said, it is really tricky. Um, there's some really intricate little pieces in here, uh, but make sure you really study those diagrams and as I said, get everything lined up exactly as in the pictures and you should be okay. Thank you. 
that's probably one of the trickiest parts getting all these lugs lined up into these holes uh, but there you go that's how it goes on and uh, yeah on to the next step This part's really fiddly, you've got to put the conrods on like this, and then you've got to hold it with one of these little clips. I think these are just temporary, like that. So you do four that side, and then four on the other side, and it should look something like this when you've finished it. Then we've got to feed those four conrods into the block. Like that, and just note you've got one arrow pointing forward there and the other one pointing backwards. Wow, that really does take some force to push that together. I've got to tell you, that uh, takes a bit of pressure to get it on. But uh, yeah, it's uh, nearly there now. We're going to take those temporary holders out of the way. So that all moves freely. That looks good. Uh, just to put uh, the top on. And I think that's the engine done. Okay, then now for the tricky bit, we've got to get this, we've got to get all these lugs in the side lined up with the uh, side of the chassis, so fingers crossed. So get the long front and rear pieces in first. That's it. And now we've just got to tease it all together. Just check the alignment as you go and uh, be very careful if it's not going just check that you've got it lined up properly because as I said before you will break something if you don't get everything exactly lined up this is going to be a bit tricky guys so that's the rear mostly done and I've just forgot the other elastic band so this one you have to put a loop in again you've got a smaller loop in this one and I've got to hook this in here luckily I haven't done it up yet Okay, so I hope you can see that's in place there. Now I can try and tease this together. I'm going to say, make sure you get each of those lugs that go through lined up before we squeeze it, because there's quite a few of them to get lined up. Make sure that shaft's sticking through and it's rotating. I think. That was a success, thank goodness. Yep, it's looking good. Well, we're making some progress now. Looks like we've got quite a bit of it put together. As you can see, lots of gears going on there, but I just thought I'd stop at this little part, uh, which is attaching these elastic bands here. And it is really tricky, so uh, I'll just show you the way I got around it. So you have to knot the elastic band like that, make four of those, and this short end clips onto the chassis rail here. I'll just zoom in. You can just see them there on this side and it really is tricky to get inside you've got to get the elastic band on the inside here 
Hopefully you can just see that. And the only way I can get it through is with a couple of cocktail sticks. I've got one there to try and push it through. And then on the other side, you kind of tease it through, if you can see, and uh, just clip it over those uh, holes. So yeah, I don't know what they're for yet, but uh, we'll see later on. So the next really tricky part is page 32 where we've got to put that uh, cockpit into the chassis and yeah it's a bit tricky. So there's your cockpit, you've got to make sure that this gear lever, there's a little notch that you might be able to see lines up with a little notch on the dashboard so get those lined up and then really importantly you've got this here, hopefully you can just see that moving there, that's got a little line on the wood to uh, line up. So make sure that's in line and then we've got to get this end which is the steering into that hole there that I hope you can see and then into this slot here and if you look carefully this gear there that's uh, moved by that handle there it's got to mesh up with this gear here so just get that into the hole and I'm just trying to tease it into position now be very very careful else we're going to break something and get these in very carefully just tease it down just a little bit at a time it takes a lot of pressure I tell you okay that looks like it's all the way in okay now that's lined up but I think this lever is in the wrong position yeah, I'm not lined up. When that lines up at the front there um, on the dash, this isn't lined up, so I'm going to have to take it all off and get it lined up again. Back in a bit. Okay, so I've got it relocated. We're, I just had to move a tooth over on that gear under there. You can't see now. Got the front in, so the steering sort of works. I'm just about to see that. And then now, when we use this lever, we can change gear. Uh, you do have to kind of fiddle with this to get it to move but if you can see that lever there when I move it up look it moves across and then all the way across you can see that lever moving so that's what you need to do here you go and just move this front lever over and it should go all the way there you go so that's about as best as I can get it guys So technically the manual isn't incorrect, it does give those numbers there which are, as you can see, there on the board here that you push out from, but it is made confusing because the parts that you push out, as I said, have got different numbers on in the uh, 70s and 80s, so yeah, that's very confusing, so watch out for that.
and this is where we are at page 62. So as you can see that's the seats finished this is at the end of page 69 uh, there it was a fiddly process I've got to say like the rest of it but uh, it's all back together now and seems to be working okay so one thing to do before we can put this into the car itself and that's to fit the floor or the floor matting which is this piece of card here I think that just simply slides underneath that central shaft there in the middle there we go it's in place and now I can try and get those seats in they just locate with the tabs that are on the bottom there it just takes a little bit of teasing into place there we go and I think that's the car finished and isn't it an incredible model? I mean, just look at that. The level of detail is kind of second to none, really. Um, I think they've, uh, they haven't really overlooked anything. They've got all the detail on the top and the interior, but on top of that, if you look underneath, you can see all the workings of the car. You can see how the uh, drive is taken from the rear to the engine to move the pistons and the crankshaft. You've got that elastic band motor. Uh, you've got toolkit and a jack. We'll have a look in a minute. And it's even finished off with two exhaust pipes so yeah everything there underneath it's astonishing really to believe that this thing was put together by just uh, eight small sheets of flat plywood and it's turned out into this incredible 3d work of art but i've got to say it wasn't a walk in the park um, it really has taken a lot of effort and a lot of hours uh, to get this thing built I didn't log the exact number of hours that it took me to build it but it took me a few days uh, with quite a few hours each day but I did enjoy it like that I think is the best way to do it it shouldn't become a chore so just work on it when you feel like it and uh, get enjoyment out of building each section and then put it aside and then go back the next day that's how I did it anyway and I think with something this complex that's how you need to approach this build now even though I've built a few of these before, um, I did struggle on quite a few sections. It took me uh, all a bit of head scratching to work out exactly how the parts are supposed to go to get together. And I think I said on the other builds that if things aren't quite lining up properly or fitting together as it shows in the manual, then you've probably done something wrong. You've got to go back, take it apart, realign everything. And where it says to put that candle wax on the parts to lubricate them and help them go together, don't ignore that, that the wax does make a massive difference and if you're having trouble getting some of those pieces fitted together a little bit of wax on each of the parts does help a long way. So thankfully I think I've got most of the operational parts to actually work and operate so let's have a quick look. Uh, the first simple thing is the seats move forward and backwards and you do need to move that back seat in order to get to the winder there to uh, wind up the rear window as you can see there. The doors open and shut, you've got the hinges there and then you can get to this little lever and you can wind up the, uh, the windows on the doors and wind them down. The windscreen wipers go back and forth using that little knob inside the, uh, the dashboard. The uh, glove box opens up. Obviously that steering wheel works and you've got the working steering at the front and working suspension and amazingly because there's an elastic band in the centre of the, the construction of the rear wheels, there is a little bit of suspension on the rear as well, which is pretty good. There's a lever here inside the cockpit. If you press that, you can see the, the bonnet opens. And uh, there's a lever you can hold that up with so you can see the motor. And there's a little button there at the back. You press that and uh, the boot opens. There we go. And that's where you can get to the winding mechanism. If I just wind that now, you'll probably be able to see the pistons are going up and down and the fan moving inside the motor there. But one of the coolest features for me is the fact you can actually select the gears using the lever on the steering column. That just blow me away how that works. I think I've got it in forward at the moment. If I push it downwards, you can see I can wind it up and the wheels aren't moving because it's in neutral now. But it is still turning the motor over as you can see. Push that lever all the way down and it 
should be in reverse now. There you go. You can see it's going backwards. There you go. And as I said, put the lever in the top position and we should be in forward gear. There we go. Okay, then to take it for a spin, you have to press this lever here towards the right. You just hear a click and then you wind it up and place it down and then there's a second lever just pop that across and it should move forward fingers crossed yeah there we go just stop it but uh, yeah it, so I don't think it will travel very far but I think it's just a great kind of talking point you can show people that the thing does function so just a quick look underneath it as I said you can uh, take out your little toolkit and it does open up you can see all the tools in there which is pretty cool and we've also got under here a working jack I'll just show you you can see turn the lever there there's a ratchet on it and uh, the jacking point goes up and then there's a little lever at the side here we press that and uh, we can push it back down so we can uh, jack the side of the car up I don't know if you can see that from this angle but there, there it's up and then I'll press the lever and down it goes again so there we have it. If you've got uh, a few hours that you want to spend putting something together that you can be proud of, that's going to give your brain a bit of a workout, then I totally recommend this. Now, if you're just expecting to pop a few pieces together, and uh, you know, a few clicks and the thing's going to be built, then this is not the kit for you. This is for somebody who's really into modeling and wants to give themselves a bit of a workout, give your brain and your fingers. Um, I found it absolutely fascinating to build and now it's finished I'm going to really look forward to displaying this and showing my friends the thing that I've created from a, a box of flat parts. So there you go, I hope you enjoyed the video and all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching and hope to catch you on the next one. Bye!